there's no way you can say too strongly how powerful empathy is because it is, um, you know, it's, it's, it basically is what life is built on. Basically, if you want to get down to the deepest aspects of what empathy is about, you know, you are wired the, the, the baby from when you're a baby, you're wired neurologically to have sensors. They're called mirror neurons. And even an infant knows when somebody understands them. That's what empathy is. It's basically understanding. It's the, it's the ability to understand another person's experience, but past that for them to understand that you understand. And then we feel known and we feel understood. That changes our brains when somebody knows how we feel, when they know what they what we need, what hurts us, what we fear, what makes us angry, what we're afraid of losing, what helps us. You ever walked into your boss's office and the whole team's waiting to see how it goes and you go in there and you tell them about something and they walk out and the team goes, so how'd it go? And you go, he, he didn't get it. What you're usually meaning is he didn't hear me. Or a spouse comes home to a note after 10 years of marriage and it says, I can't do this anymore. And she's gone or he's gone. And they go, what, what, how, what? And they're totally surprised. But the other person's been telling them for five years, but they're not hearing it. And the other person's not feeling understood or heard. It changes everything. I wrote a book called Trust, and the first pillar of trust is when we feel feel understood. And, and we have to be able to do that well, and we need it in our own lives in order to grow. Your brain actually changes, and we'll go into a little bit of that in a second, when we're empathized with. But... This isn't something that's easy to learn sometimes, unless you've had a lot of it done to you in your life. You know, people that are empathized with tend to become empathic people. But when I went into training, um, my first year, I was working on my PhD to become a psychologist. My first year, we had a year of empathy training. Now, you might have been at your company to a listening workshop for an hour and a half. We had a year of this. Learning how to listen deeply so that the other person felt like they were being understood. Because what that does is it opens up their ability to experience and know themselves. It opens up their ability to trust. It opens up their ability to engage with you to pull out more of what's in them so they can heal. But my point is it takes time. It takes practice. And I want you to begin to practice. I want you to, to, you know, when you're talking to your teenager or you're talking to your spouse or a friend or a coworker, just listen and empathize. Take the content of what they're saying and the feelings of what they're saying, and maybe the consequences of what they're saying, and just put it all into a sentence and say, gosh, it sounds like when when he ghosted you, you felt like really betrayed, and that's led to some, now you're even afraid to start dating again. Well, yeah, because, and see what that does is, they're nodding with you and they're going, yeah, you're, and, and the conversation goes deeper. They feel heard. It's a big deal. It draws out more of the other persons. It deepens your connection to them. It gives a connection, the experience of withness. Somebody is with me. I'm not alone in it anymore. And this is, this is what the best marriages are built on that, that bubble of safety, as John Gottman calls it, that I'm in a safe place. I'm psychologically safe because this person hears me. And, you know, we're wired for this from birth. All of us have mirror neurons. You know when somebody's listening. You can tell by the way they're attuned to you or listening or their eye contact. You see it by, by them nodding, by their expressions. You hear it in tones. You see it in body language. I was talking to a person at a gathering the other night, and 
really nice guy. I like this guy. He's fun. He's smart. You know, known him for a while. But as we're talking, he's, you know, kind of like scanning the room. He wasn't with me anymore. And I don't know what had happened if he was looking for somebody. But, I, you know, I said, well, I'm going to go get some, you know, something to drink. So I didn't, <laughs> sort of like that old George Thorogood song, when I drink alone, I prefer to be by myself. And if we're not being empathized with, we're by ourselves. So it is very powerful. Now, in terms of the actual power past what I've talked about, um, which is it, it deepens a connection it makes somebody feel better it makes them feel all of this stuff but it also increases the brain's ability to regulate our emotions have you ever noticed when a toddler's upset and you're listening and they they feel you know they start to calm down well our brain regulation internalizes the empathy of others and that becomes a self-regulatory process that we have because somebody else has has, has listened to us validated us you've often heard in you know the big fat out there now is um, a lot about dealing with narcissistic people and and one of the big terms that came from that was um getting gaslighted well gaslighted is when you're being talked out of how you feel or talked out of what you see or talked out of your experience your reality in today's language talked out of your truth well empathy talks you back into your truth. It helps you realize what you're feeling, what you're thinking and become more and more of yourself. It also helps in subject object differentiation. In other words, if somebody, if we have poor boundaries and somebody's empathizing with us, we experience a dyad for the first time and we know what I am and who they are. And that helps in the whole process of forming the structure of our brains character structures are formed sometimes from invalidation of early experience and that's where you know you look at borderline personality for example um a lot has been done in the area of, of emotional dysregulation in early childhood of having their experiences not validated and empathized with and it turns into rage states that live in their own world and pop out here and there and a lot of stuff. So it's very important uh, developmentally. It's very important in both the etiology and the repair of um, what we call character disorders, borderline personality, narcissistic personality disorder. It always makes me crazy when I hear somebody say, well, my therapist said my husband's a narcissist and you know, they don't change. And I go, stop it. What do you mean they don't change? We've been treating narcissistic personality disorders since the 70s. And they absolutely can change with the right kind of treatment and some other factors in place. It doesn't mean they all do, but many, many, many do. I've seen it. I've done it. I mean, uh, but it takes empathy. Now, not only empathy, it takes a lot of other stuff, like some limits and boundaries and skills building and a bunch of stuff. But it ain't ever going to happen without empathy. I promise you that. And it's just a key to life. Um, I got to give this plug for the most empathic person that I know. His name is Jesus and Merry Christmas. <laughs> it is the Christmas season. And that is when we, we celebrate from, you know, the way I look at the world, the greatest act of empathy was when God, who was not in pain and above it all, put on human flesh to come be Emmanuel, God with us, where with is empathy. And that's what Christmas is about. It's about the being with that um, we, first of all, celebrate when God came to be with us. And now we're to live out his love by being with each other in a deeply empathic um, connection. So a little bit on empathy there, go practice it. Um, just go to the office and when somebody's telling you a story, just empathize. You know, so many people you say, how's your day going? Oh yeah. You know, I, I, I went to, um, you know, went, went to the store and 
I stepped on the curb and I hurt my, oh yeah, well, I hurt my ankle too. I mean, they're not empathizing. They're using that as a cue to start talking about themselves. Totally alone, totally dysregulated, totally ignored. And now you're feeling worse because they didn't empathize with you by going the next step and listening more deeply. They used it as a cue to start talking about their own experience. So don't do that. When somebody's talking to you, go deeper into their experience and be curious about it and draw it out and see what happens.